I'm going to start a new account. Um, it's just like, I don't really know what I'm expecting from it, but I'm just expect. I would just like to have seen sort of cost per purchase, just a fraction of what it is, to be honest. Got you. Okay. Give very quickly, give like a quick rundown of what, what are you selling here? Yeah, so it's a bit different to products. So it's, it's basically buy online insurance. So it's insurance products for sort of cycles, bikes and stuff like that in the UK. Yep, yep. So they're fairly high premium. I suppose AOV is typically quite high. They've got smaller margins. So like cost per purchase, realistically, AOV is more like 200 to 220 pounds. Yep. So, But I mean, if we look at, for instance, this month so far, Well, it's, it's, it's insurances. Yeah, insurance policies. So buy online they, insurance policies. And they check this out online. Yeah. So okay. these purchases are completed purchases. What tends to happen, the customer flow is landing page, quote form. So you put your details in, your postcode, all that sort of stuff, all the details that they want. And then you get a price, you make a purchase on the website and you get an insurance policy for a year. So okay. these purchases here, six purchases would be a completed but, you yeah, know, just a traditional right. purchase. What is it hosting on? WordPress or Shopify? Uh, it's like a custom. Gotcha. Yeah. So all these, these are not like custom um, Shopify integrated purchases. These are pixel integrated through Tag Manager. Okay. Do you so do you have the um, the API on this? Conversion API. I've not set up. No. So these purchases you... may be slightly incorrect. But gotcha. we've had a look at their back end. I mean, they've got traffic from everywhere. They've got Google. They've got all these other sort of referrals and stuff. And the, there is correlation. I should imagine there's one or two purchases that we're not attributing. But even then, you know, average cost, cost per purchase is still higher than what I'd like it to be, even if we try and attribute ones that have been missed. Gotcha. Just, just if you can, I would definitely push to get it installed because – Yes, it will give you a little bit more insights into orders, but there's more to it. Okay. You no, know, just giving Facebook the API option, they also can see a few contents. They can see add to cards. They can see initiate checkouts and just in general page views. So there will wow. be just so much more happening on the site that Facebook will take for you and then use to optimize those ads. Right, okay. Yeah. Then another thing you could do here because it is custom, you can get like a Zapier going and have all the purchases being sent back through offline purchases. So when someone buys on the site, take a Zapier where you have to trigger event, uh, bought something on the site, so to say, then send it back and it's called Facebook offline conversions. So then what Facebook will do, it will take every single order on that site. They will look at it. They will look at all the data and see if they find a Facebook click ID. If that's the case, They'll go to your ad account. They'll find what ID it was associated with and it will allocate that order to that specific ad. Right, okay. Yeah. Because um, with something like this, I think that's going to be, can have a big impact on, on accounts like this. Okay. Do, do you yeah. see that people quite often, after they fill in the quote, do they buy straight away or do they like think on it? Yeah, I mean, it, it varies. I mean, typically, they, they probably click away, they get an email, and then, you know, three or four days later, they may they may make a purchase. Gotcha. But then sometimes they buy on the spot. It really depends on, I suppose, how quick you hit them. Perfect. Let me see. Can I very quickly do remote control? Just have a look yeah, through the article. Feel free, mate, yeah. What events fire, um, Brandon? What is it when they go on the website? To purchase. So what I've got, I've got lead, initiate checkout and purchase. Let me just change my security preferences to allow yep. this. Um, so yeah, it's, it's lead, initiate checkout and purchase. Lead being basically when you've got a price, you've got like a, a price of say £200 and then initiate checkout being you, you're just about, you put your card details in and then purchase being, so you purchase. Yeah. yeah, okay, cool. I haven't got anything, view content or anything like that set up. They're just the three major events that, that I'd be more concerned in looking at. Yeah, fair enough. What's your, what's your outbound click rate like? Um, just try and get approved on that again. There we go. So we've tried a few things. I mean, I've tried 
sort of audiences, as you can see, there's quite a few. I mean, this is a CBO campaign running then. Um, it's just nothing really seems to be majorly clicking, really. Yeah. I mean, for, I mean, what's the cost per purchase at the moment? I mean, since we've ran the, the date range from the 26th of the 10th, which is really when I started this um, ad set, to now, cost per purchase is like over 100 quid, which realistically... Because... So what are the costs associated with an insurance for them? Realistically, out of a, a, a total cost, their pro and their amount that they get back. So you traditionally about probably twenty five percent, but it varies because of the so the insurance policy, and it's the profits out of that is about thirty percent. So, so their their profit margin is fifty percent. Yeah, approximately. I mean, it varies. Um, depending on where the traffic comes from and, and obviously paying stuff out, but approximately it's about that. Okay, so what, like 3.3 row as needed to break even? Yeah, realistically. But like I said, that, I mean, AOV is nearly, it's probably like 200 to 250 quid yeah. per purchase. So it's a fi fairly high row as for break even, but it's not, it's a quite high AOV. Mm -hmm. Was it just UK? Yeah. One thing I would definitely recommend with accounts like this, always go for manual placements. Okay. Just like, like feed and... Yeah, yeah, exactly. All that other stuff, like Facebook is overspending like crazy on it right now. Okay. I would just isolate it as much as possible. Just feed? Uh, I, yeah, I would do feed, both Instagram and Facebook. Mm -hmm. You could split their stories, but personally, I wouldn't be surprised if most likely you're not really getting anything from stories here anyway. Okay. The creative wise, I like the the call out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, creative is fairly strong to be honest. Um, I mean, they're they're not well, perfect, but they're definitely not the worst I've seen. How much have you split that to copy? Done a few different things. That seems to be one of the high performers. Um, but no, I mean, I'm not done it really heavily. Tested it to be honest. Got you. So. Watch this video. And write your copy based on this. Right. Cool. There we go. Yeah, so watch this and then base all your copy on this. Anyone else in this call as well, make sure you watch this video afterwards. And use this for yourself as well when you're talking to clients. I know Facebook recommends, I think it's 125 characters for the primary text. What's your guys' experience yeah. uh, for short, short form versus long form? It's like if they have started doing like below the copy, you know, where they now have like these symbol marks where they say, hey, only do this amount of characters. Ultimately, what Facebook's play is like, they want to go the TikTok route. Ideally, they want you to run like a single line copy with a video. Because that video, they can show everywhere. They can show this on, on Reels. They can show this on Stories, Feeds, every single possibility. So it's easier for them to take your video as. So if you're, for example, running something like this, I would personally always prefer to go longer form just because it's very important that you have like the quality of traffic. Right. Because what you're going to get, people are, they see this bike theft. Oh, for example, you know, they're going to click on it just, just for, for the sake of it, so to say. Right. So you want to have some sort of way where, because maybe by you saying here, cycle insurers and straight away going for like the safe 10%, you're going to get a certain amount of traffic to the site. 
mm. like the people who are how you call it like um they're they're kind of hot for discounts like they are very easily allocated towards discount allowances and all that stuff they're going to click on this whereas most likely what i would expect is that the people who take bike insurance and knowing from myself having lived in london the people who use a bike, there's always expensive stuff. You know, it's not like a hundred dollar bike. You know, these people cruise around on like thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollar bikes. So it's like a traffic that has money to spend. So you can use that methodology in your copy. But you can even use statistics. You now you can kind of speak to it like, hey, listen, there is like, um, like you can do like, make it like kind of funny. You know, hey, there's, I don't know, a 71% chance that your bike gets stolen. You know, go straight, go for, for the heavy punch. Yeah, cool. I like that. And then we can make from that, you can make straight away like a bridge drum saying, but hey, it doesn't have to be like this. Because the people who use, how it's called, ever sure, they drive around their bike knowing <laughs> that it's covered. Yeah, cool. Because so I think like cost per purchase wise, it's, it's fine. It's not like it's, uh, how you call it, like... Uh, it's, it's crazy. Like the biggest optimization is if you can get that cost per click, where is it? Uh, your CPC, if you can get this to 120, 125, 130, you're basically already doing the same thing for the same budget, but you're getting double the volume. Yeah. Because like targeting wise, you can test a lot, but technically the only targeting you should use is buy, you know? You can test that lookalikes, but most likely, if you cannot get the bike interest to work, you have to go back to the drawing board. Cool. You know, it's the same if you're um, like, uh, what's an easy example? If you're selling, uh, I don't know, you're selling yoga classes and you cannot sell it to people who already do yoga, it's your offer. Mm hmm so it's a copy, copy and creative issue, or yeah, that's over. from what I'm seeing over here. I think that's probably where where I would focus on. Yeah, copy more than creative. I think creative wise, this looks good. Yeah, you can ask them. Of course, is I know it's a hard question, but maybe they have some sort of insight what the most used bike is, and then mm -hmm. you can split test if quite often like emotion always sells. So if you show someone with the bike and a face to it, there's more emotional connection in the, in the, in the image. Because mm -hmm. then you make the bridge gap between a person and its bike. And then, hey, oh, this person needs the bike to go to work. What do I do if my bike would have gone? I'm screwed. Yeah. Because right now you kind of present it like as a car. Like you show the Ferrari without a person. And then it's kind of like, oh, I dream to have the Ferrari. That's the approach you're using now. Yeah. Yeah, no, so ask the, uh, the, the, the owners of the business, like what kind of bikes do you see quite often being insured? Yeah. No, I like it. And maybe next level from that is like, if they have the images, is having like an image of a, someone with the bike or just the bike on itself with like iconic places in London. And that would work well if you use a statistics approach. Because if you say, hey, there's a 72% chance your bike gets stolen in the UK. And you have an image of a bike at, I don't know, Piccadilly Circus, and you connect all dots. Cool. Let me know. So, any else, other specific questions or any others who want to? Anyone else want to go over another count, guys? Well, before, uh, I have a question on this one still. Before you said yeah. that it would be better to switch to uh, manual placements, right? Yeah. Um, and then you mentioned that stories would probably not work anyways. Um, Correct. Why do you think that? Like, let me, let me ask, for example, yourself. Let's say you're in your phone and you're going through stories. Yeah. And you see this image. Okay, you, you don't see copy. You only see bike theft. What are, you, what are you thinking? Nothing, probably. Exactly. You need copy to explain this offer. 
Yeah. But That's I mean, like if you I personally, I only see e-commerce quite often work because in the item sells. Now you okay. could try stories, but then you really need to make an optimized creative for it. Then you would need to have a bike with some sort of like headline that indicates that you're selling insurance for a bike. Yeah. yeah it makes sense. I'll be trying videos for this, Brandon. A few, but I mean, they're mainly, I mean, you know, I want to try and add a bit of UGC into it, into the mix, but such a hard thing to do when you haven't got a physical product. So for instance, yeah. Uh, what have we got? This one. What's your overall, what's overall the best? Is it this image? Is this this one, image? this works the best. And which one have I just selected here? The ones that are getting the most purchases are, the one we just looked at and this one which is exactly the same because that was the first one that i made and then that was working so i basically just replicated it into a video yeah just someone biking along just that same thing basically i think really man you should go in on the statistics approach like, yeah I'm, no no i like I'm that. so i'm confident that's going to work God, mm -hmm. even i know is like i I haven't been in the UK for two years, but even I know how, how many bikes get stolen there. Uh, so I'm pretty sure if you speak in on that and people read that, they know because it's in the news everywhere. And this one, I was, just found such a great website. Turn off. TikTok style, basically just showing customer journey, you know. How did this perform? Because I can imagine this to work quite well, actually. This is what I thought. Yeah. So, I mean, that's basically just showing the customer journey, blah, blah, blah. It's not performed that great, but there's probably been, not been a massive amount of spend on it. So budget, daily budget is not significant. Yeah. Um, but hold on, let me get rid of. Do you not use um, the outbound click through rate as a metric? Outbound click through. Yeah, yeah, it's there. Right. I think I saw yeah. it. No, it's uh, unique. No, I've not got outbound. Just oh, there got we go. Unique, unique is on. Yeah. Is that one better? I personally use Outbound a lot because um, it just shows you the percentage of clicks that will leave the Facebook or Instagram platform and go off the website um, or off to another website because it's Outbound off of, off of Facebook. Um, so it sort of excludes all the clicks that you get that you know from people clicking on read more or people clicking on comments, etc. Um, so yeah, that's that's the main reason. But link link click through rates sort of does the same thing. To be fair, right. yeah, I mean the pipe. I mean these ones are retargeting, so they're a little bit different. But for cold, yeah, the ones we looked at are the best creators, really. Yeah, fair enough. This one, this is I've just recently launched, so I'm not got any thing on this. It's just a bit like a sort of meme style looking one, just with a. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, I, I like the idea of the, the stats. I can play on that, definitely. And if, yeah. if it makes sense, like, see if there are specific states or, like, cities, so to say, that stick out. Yeah. Well, it's probably, like, uh, like the big metropolitan cities, the, the Liverpools, the, the Manchesters, yeah. London, maybe Birmingham. Yeah, I have to speak to your client because, obviously, it depends on a lot of some insurance policies like the high risk of stuff the stuff like that's like guaranteed to be stolen they don't really want to underwrite because they don't make any money on it mm -hmm. so yeah. it's just a case of speaking to them and seeing what angle i mean i've tried it a few different angles um but i mean this stuff that is, you're, you're seeing is really what i've managed to find click so far and potentially what you of course could do is you could look at like i don't know a big big health insurance company or so and mm. back backtrack their approach like how how do they go about their ads mm -hmm. to be honest there's not really a lot of insurance brands doing facebook ads which you'd be surprised you know like maybe not an untapped niche for you then man yeah well I, yeah, I suppose you can, if you look, I mean, if you, if you put an insurance in Facebook ads manager library, you're going to see the fucking worst ads ever. 
nothing's going to work. Like you literally scroll through the whole thing. You think, well, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. Yeah. So if you can get it to work, yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, if you can get this to work, then... Well, I mean, we, we, we do, I mean, you're not a million miles away. 100% I've got some um, purchases that are not coming through. I know it is because, you know, I've, I've been on calls and we've looked yeah. at the back end and there are purchases where they've said, well, actually, we don't really know where this has come from. So 100% there's more purchases coming through, but it just would have been nice to get a bit higher volume, that's all. Yeah. I mean, if we look at... 26th of October to the art uh, on this is really since we launched these ads. Average cost of £120, which is fairly high. Mm -hmm. Realistically, the, the probably the realistic cost per purchase is more like 90 if you class unattributed sales, but that's still higher than I wanted it to be. But yeah, I mean, if you if your view on the overall account, I mean, if it doesn't, look, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm de definitely doing something wrong. But yeah, no, I like the, I like the approach that you said, the copy and the creative approach. Yeah, and if if cost per purchase are a real hard metric, you you could introduce cost caps, but for that to work, you really need to have a lot of data. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want you to get this the way. Like I said, if you do see a lot of competitors that are absolutely dreadful. You know, this could potentially be your niche. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've I've got sort of seven years of insurance experience. That's the where I come from previously, so I yeah. know the industry inside and out, which has helped me. Would you want this to be your niche? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it's just this is the niche I'm going going after. This is. Yeah. That's my thing. Yeah. How many clients have you got in like the insurance? Niche? Uh, I, I, for a few, but I mean, the first ones. I mean, I've not been doing it that long. So seven months. Um, Took yeah. me a couple of months to really understand what the hell I was doing as far as running an agency and whatnot. And then took a first client on and 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 binned that one straight away. It just wasn't that good. And then this is like next one sort of thing. Yeah, fair enough. How, how have you been doing outreach to reach out to these people? LinkedIn, email. I mean, I've got like over like six hundred insurance connections on LinkedIn. I post shitloads on there, so that's where most of it comes from. And then just load of email outreach. I mean, yeah. outreach sales. If, if I'll be honest, I could have my eyes closed. Yeah. It's not hard. Definitely with an in industry like this where there's not many people hitting them on every door saying Facebook ads, Facebook ads, Facebook ads. Yeah. Exactly. They're, not, they're not getting requests for Facebook ads at all. But the yeah. hardest thing is saying you should use Facebook ads. What's the, and then they say, well, what's the power of Facebook ads? Why should I be using that? So it's a, it's a, different, it's a different hurdle, you know. Yeah. Where e-commerce hurdle is your the hurdles that you guys probably find if you're doing e-commerce is I'm getting hit up by 10 other agencies wanting to do my Facebook ads. Yeah. Um, the, the objection I'm getting is why should we use Facebook ads? Yeah. You know what? The majority of our leads now come through Facebook ads. So we run ads for ourselves. Yeah. And the great thing is it automatically sort of um remove that, that question and that hurdle because if they say well why do you need facebook ads or we can say well the, the only reason why we're speaking today is because of a facebook ad you came through our flow yeah so you know you would yeah, no, never no. have heard of us if if we're in facebook ads and we could replicate the same for you obviously yeah within e-commerce it is a bit easier to sort of get over that because you know it's, it's built on paid traffic whereas you know the more traditional niches might not be yeah, uh, but you could consider that you know once you've got a bit of cash flow, um, and you notice that it is difficult to convince them via you know um, a cold email or a LinkedIn message, try the paid traffic routes, try Facebook ads. You could even upload that list of six hundred um, connections. You know, scrape the emails. There are LinkedIn scrapers that can scrape those emails. Mm. Upload down to Facebook and just retarget that list. Yeah, yeah, no, I like that. Yeah. 100%. I mean, the, the, the biggest thing is just, I mean, results. If I can get something that's just like absolutely mind blowing, yeah. Makes it 10 times easier, doesn't it? Proving yeah. the pudding then. Yeah, there's some good metrics here, but it's, it's like, it's like, like 0 0.3 and you've got 8.7. So I think if you can just, um, obviously, you know, a lot of them have got like less spend than the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
get the, the ROAS to be a bit more consistent, get the cost of pages to a consistent point where you know exactly how much it's costing you to acquire a purchase. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll be so much easier to get this account up and running. Yeah, cool. And no, I appreciate that. So just takeaways, have a look at getting conversion API. I must admit, I've not done that at all. So I somehow have to look into sure. manual yeah. placements and then just playing on some potential different creatives around sort of stats, mainly stats sort of mm -hmm. copy yeah. and creative. Now, if you have the creators ready, just run it raw. I wouldn't target anything at all. Yeah, well, just open interest. Yeah, just open interest. Don't target yeah. anything else. Cool. Now really let the creative do the, do the work for you. Yeah, I mean, I did. Uh, it probably is and just you showing this one, there was one that was doing pretty good. Like, uh, was it Interest Outdoors? Yeah, that was one with the high rollers. Yeah, then I would need, yeah. I would just duplicate that and just throw a hundred bucks a day at it. Because you got great what's traction the, on that one. What's the client's our budget, Brandon? Uh, like 75 a day. 75 a day, okay. Yeah. But I mean, it is, well, 75 day at the minute until there's something really crazy coming through and then it's like unlimited. Yeah. But, you know, that's hindsight. No, awesome, man. Good stuff. Your interest outdoors. Yeah, that's, that's one at the minute, to be honest. 100%. That's only been running two days. Started on the 10th, 11th. The other one's been running a couple of weeks at least. Hi there guys, hope you're doing well. And if you are seeing this, that means you've made it to the end of the video. So thank you so much for watching. And that was basically a snippet of a one-time event where we basically went in, analyzed your ad accounts and uh, answered any questions that you had completely free of charge, no strings attached. So if you wanna join something like this, there's nothing really like this on the cards anytime soon. However, we do have a coaching program where we do exactly this. So not only do we show you exactly you know, how we've been able to generate multiple six figures with our agencies, generate hundreds and hundreds of appointments per month for ourselves as well as our coaching students, but we'll also answer all of your questions analyze your clients ad accounts and also share our screens and show you exactly how we're generating leads for our own agency how we're generating sales for our you know e-com stores our own clients and so on and so forth so if that sounds interesting to you i will leave a few resources in the first comments of this video one of them will be Irwin's own youtube channel so feel free to check that out and subscribe to his channel uh, the other one will be the link to the free agency scale and fast track Facebook group. And the third one will be to book a free call with one of us or so, you know, basically someone on our team, no external sales guy, not like that. It will be someone on the team, either myself, either Erwin, Brandon or Elliot. We will go over where you're currently at with your agency and then see if we can come up with a game plan to get you up to six figures and beyond as well and you know the best way of uh, of doing so so if that sounds interesting to you it will all be linked in the first comment down below but for now i will wrap up this video here thank you so much for watching like share comment subscribe and i'll see you all in the next video <laughs>